what is up friends family followers um to all of you guys around the world whether you're self-isolating social distancing whatever you're doing if you're making an effort to eradicate this virus then thank you to all the doctors nurses and anyone helping in that respect thank you formula one the engineers are making ventilators to help people in intensive care with coronavirus so the world is fighting back guys and before i start this podcast just want to remind you the usual stuff you know wash your hands um cleanliness is what's going to get rid of this and following the rules basically i mean who really wants to listen to boris but if the professionals next to him tell you what's what then they gotta be right and we've got to listen and like no one's invincible uh don't go thinking that i'm one of the people that are more at risk um to this virus but we're all at risk um there's those more at risk but know that whoever you are however healthy you are or young you are like it can get you and just be careful just follow the rules you know go don't don't um go against all of it you know as humans we all want to be like yeah ignore this we're going to fight this don't let this change our way of living but maybe we need to change our way of living um you know and the world is going to get a break from all the stuff we do to ruin it as people um think about it this way there ain't going to be no um people chopping down trees in the amazon because the world has stopped um so look at it that way you know uh, maybe it's karma for the way we treated our planet, but that's a discussion for another time. Anyway, I'm going to roll the intro, and yeah, let's hit it. Another podcast, doing what we can in self-isolation. We're making the most of it, guys. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. This is podcast 33, I think. And, you know, what else am I going to talk about other than the current situation? I mean, it could be worse. could be a lot worse. could be better, but if we want to get rid of this virus, we've got to beat it together. Uh, we're stronger together. The whole world is in this battle, so it's not like one person or one group of people are like, oh, we feel sorry, for, we feel bad for them. Pray for them, you know. We're praying for each other, ourselves. Um, and the numbers of deaths are increasing. I, I'm not going to talk about that. I mean, all you hear on the news is that. I mean, that just doesn't help your day-to-day focus in life. Those of you who are still going to work, thank you. Um, you're clearly needed and part of society that is needed in this difficult time. Because people got to eat. We need doctors. We need pharmacies. We need nurses. These jobs are what are going to help us through this. And yeah, everyone's chipping in. Like I said, Formula One, they're making ventilators and all this. Um, but just the amount of memes around self-isolation and this virus is unbelievable. It's too much. I'm posting way too many memes. But yeah, my brother's still working too. Because his kind of job doesn't involve being around a lot of people and stuff. So in that aspect, it's good for him. You know, he doesn't get to really hang around a lot of people, so that's all right. And it's it's a job that's needed. You know, uh, safety alarms and all that, fire alarms and, like, that kind of equipment that's needed for most buildings to operate, you know. So he's got to do that. And wherever he does go, we do say, if you see a supermarket, try and get us food, because around here there's really not much. There's a shortage of milk and toilet paper. But, guys, don't be selfish. Don't go buying eight things when there's only two of you at home. And there's people stocking up. Um, people, people that do, some people that do stock up will be probably giving it away to other people to help those in need. But if you're just hoarding food that you don't even need, I mean, that's just a waste. Like, how much toilet paper do you really need? 
there's too many toilet paper memes. Like, just order it on Amazon, chill out. Um, and takeaway places are still open, so you can still get your pizza, you can still get your KFC, guys, you can still get your Mickey D's. So, that's one thing to celebrate, you can just order that every day. Uber Eats. Why is my laptop making noise? Guys, I mean, we're all in this together, like I said. Doing what we can, trying to keep light-hearted, but there's serious stuff going on. Different countries are treating it differently, but a lot of European countries are in lockdown. I'm praying for Italy. It's chaos over there. I speak to a lot of people on a daily basis now through FaceTime uh, or WhatsApp, like video calls. A lot more because I don't get to see these people. Um, to see the situation and people are really down over there um, because of the high, high death toll and the risk. And I think, if anything, all news outlets exaggerate, but in Italy they just give people a lot of fear like they put fear in you more than they should yeah to stop people breaking the rules but like it doesn't help your day-to-day -day mentality and I've got friends out there that are really suffering not being able to get out as they normally do because us Italians we're really social and really outgoing extroverts in our lives hanging around at bars and you know in the street or Soci socialising, you know, going out to eat a lot, all this. Something they can't do now in Italy. So they're on their balconies singing, making the most of it. But I tell you what, if people start singing here, it's going to be chaos because you're going to hear like 100 people singing Oasis. Like, that'd be great. But like, Wonderwall, you know, like, there's going to be a lot of people trying to sing it. But it won't even come out as a song. Us British trying to sing, come on. You know, I mean, no, it's not going to work here, singing out our front doors or balconies in some cases. But think about it this way, like, I feel for people that have, uh, like, really small houses or small gardens or, like, no garden, like, if you live in an apartment, like, that must be difficult. We're lucky enough to have a garden to go in and just, when the sun is out, enjoy it. Um, over the next 12 weeks hopefully there's some nice weather I know seeing this lovely weather is going to like depress some people because they know they can't fully enjoy it but just stay away from people like that's it you can go to the park just stay away from people that's it I don't know why I'm repeating myself it's kind of obvious really just don't touch anything you know what I mean or wash your hands shower or wash your body regularly I don't know like when you come from the outdoors, like don't be wearing those clothes around the house. You know, cleanliness is how we're going to beat this and like wash your hands. Why are we saying that now? Why haven't we always said that? Like some kids don't even know how to wash their hands. They'd be having to be taught at school. Well, they were having to be taught at school. Now schools are closed. Just, But just imagine that, yeah, as a kid. Say you got your final exams this year, like a like A levels for example, like you want to get in that uni, but like the, all this fear and all this unknown is just gonna mess up your mind, you know. And you, you're trying to choose a uni and stuff. But I, I think schools are going by like your predicted grades or something, and giving you those grades. But some kids are on like borderline. That's unfair. Like I remember like the last six months of my GCSEs, I turned around my, like, my, um, maths grades, like, I was at E in, like, the January, I was getting E's and D's, and then I got a math tutor, and I got a C, it, within six months, and that was the last six months, so think about kids that are, like, on that borderline now, they haven't got that time to revise and improve and then get a better grade, uh, it's just unfair, imagine a kid that's got their leavers yet, it's like, their last year, and everyone's leaving and moving on. Like, you want to really enjoy that last few months with your classmates. I know I did, and most of, most of you probably did too. Uh, it's just, like, standard. To miss that is just, like, not fair for these kids. But it's what we have to do to defeat this. And like uh, Boris Johnson said, to remove the cloak of invisibility. 
because it is an invisible virus. But why use a Harry Potter line in a speech? You know, I mean, Boris Johnson can't even say his name. I don't think he could say his own name. Um, but Boris is like turning into a roadman because at one point he was like, do you get me? And like, only a roadman says, do you get me? Like, he's a proper, proper roadman now. Oh, Boris. Like, like him or not, we've got to listen uh, to some of the things he says. It's difficult, and I mean, some some people might like him more than I do. I find him funny, but you don't need to find a politician fun. Like, whether you find him funny or not doesn't really help anything. Like the memes, unbelievable. Trump, I find him funny. The memes, but like, as a person, nah. You know, I just can't take him seriously. Like he's blaming China. There's a video going around that he's calling it a Chinese virus. Because it's from China, doesn't mean it's a Chinese virus. Yeah, maybe they're they're to blame, but like, don't be shaming people like that, because it's basically racism. And he was like denying it. He's like, I'm not racist. It's from China. Yes, we know, but don't just like shame the Chinese for for that. Like a lot of Italians are getting a bad rap now because of this virus. Like, come on, we didn't we didn't make it. Nobody made it. You know what I mean? Well, there's conspiracies, but. Like, they're blaming Italians. Like, what did we didn't? Who knows about this virus enough? Uh, like in Italy, it was too. By the time they realised it was too late, and here we are now with, like, so many cases. A lot of cases. And the more I, I don't want to look at it, I don't want to know, because I know the toll, the numbers going up, and London is the like in terms of England, or UK. I reckon London's pretty bad because the biggest city, you know. And where there's people, it's going to spread. That is the risk. So the nearer to London you get, the more dangerous it is. Like, outside that, it's more spread out, the cases. It's more controlled. Not on the level that London is. And, you know, it's going to be a populated area where it could be worse. So us Londoners got to be especially careful. And it's like, there's fear in it, like, people are scared in some, I don't know, like, the panic, there's a panic of, like, what if there's no food, no toilet paper, like, my essentials I need, so people are panicking in, in that sense, but, like, as people, it's going to make us really appreciate what we had before, because we've lost that for now, and when we get back to normal, it's going to change a lot of people. There will be a lot more respectful of certain things, of hygiene, personal space, you know, and like health in general. Like people are going to want to be a lot healthier because, trust me, people are going to get fat with all this staying at home. And yeah, you can go out and get a bit of exercise, but like you might not have the same cho choice in food that you eat, in the balanced diet you have, because it might not be on the shelves, full stop. Like, I don't want to panic anyone, but that's what's going to happen in some cases if we keep panicking. So it's a vicious circle, really. we just got to deal with it, basically, as hard as it may be. It's easier said than done. 12 weeks ahead of me. But I've got you guys, I've got YouTube. I, I'm keeping busy. I'm making a lot more videos. And then after all this, I'm probably going to just go on hiatus for a bit, like take a break. My phone is playing up, but yeah. Yeah, anyway, I'm probably gonna take a break, um, away from YouTube a bit, just enjoy life, appreciate freedom. Cause I feel like I'm in prison for something that I never did, you know? <laughs> free me, please. I mean, talking about freeing pl prisoners, uh, there's a lot of prisoners that we let out of the prisons, cause half the guards are ill and can't guard them so you've got prisoners running around on the streets come on what is this a movie and it does feel like a movie a lot of people are saying that like an apocalypse end of the world kind of movie and speaking of end of the world or apocalypse i've been watching walking dead or re-watching walking dead from the beginning i've got 12 weeks a lot of time to kill so might as well you know a lot of series I'm going to re-watch in these days. 
weeks, months. And yeah, there's a vaccine, but don't just say, okay, the vaccine, once that comes, I can get it and I'll be fine. No, that's not the point. Like, you can spread it to others. And we know this thing has got, might come back next year. I hope not. A lot of people don't want to believe that. But it's not going to go overnight. I mean, the theory is, like, in all the books that mention this, like, they always say, like, it's going to go, like, it will come and then go just as quick as it came. But it's still here. And it's been here since, it's been around since, what, November? Something like that, in China anyway. And they're over the peak, they're getting over it now. Not to say it can't come back. But yeah, they're getting over it, but we're suffering more. We get into that peak. And they say May the 1st, um, something like that. But think about the football. I don't think they're going to bring that back on April the 4th. They'll have to wait a bit longer. But who cares, really? Like... I love football, but if it's going to save lives, then stop the football, you know, stop schools, stop what you can. Some businesses need to operate still, otherwise we're going to get stuck. But um, that's how it is. France, Italy, lockdown. I mean, I feel sorry for everyone in Italy, but just hope we don't end up that way. And we're almost ending up that way. We just need to trust the the experts, not Boris necessarily, but kind of listen to what he says because he's got a point in this case. Yeah, politicians are manipulative, lying, whatever. But um, in this situation, we've got to trust, trust in ourselves too. And it's like a journey inward, all this time spent at home. Like A lot of people can't really sit in a room in silence for an hour with themselves, with their own thoughts. They can't bear it. Like It's difficult for me too. Like, as a per- like, I've got too much going on in my brain. I can't, like, I'm trying to meditate. I can't meditate. I've got so many things running through my brain, good and bad. Like, it- it's too much going on in my head. Or not enough, you never know. <laughs> it varies. But I'm too, mu- too much to think about. Like, I'm just looking forward to freedom of getting back to normal. And that can power you through this. Knowing that it will be back and you're going to appreciate the little things more it's almost like back to like caveman instincts like only trusting people you know or family and outside that not trusting anyone not letting them near you you know all this being cautious of cautious of people you don't know like in the street like my uncle in Milan was saying that he was walking down the street because he, he had to go to the hospital for his um he had scans because um he wasn't too well so he has to have like he has to go to the hospital regardless of coronavirus. He has to have like, medical scans for his uh, for his health. And as uh, so he's walking down the street, and there's a guy like walking towards him on the street. And the other guy crosses the street. And my uncle like goes the other side just to avoid him. Uh, people are scared of each other in the street just in case the other person has it. But they're just as scared as you of the same thing. So we're all in the same boat. And Italy is is suffered before, and we're suffering now. But they'll be through it. They'll get through it. You know how many wars have destroyed countries, and it, in Italy's case, they've rebuilt. You know, World War Two did a lot of damage. London was you know was really ruined, and here we are still standing, fighting again. Um, but it's it's the whole world that's fighting this, and we all have this in common, so we can relate. So it takes away the idea of your personal like worries and problems or it puts them on hold anyway I mean like I said not many of us can bear to sit in a room in silence on our own alone with our own thoughts because some people have um, a lot of issues and I'm, I'm one of well no one doesn't have any issues but like there's things that will go through your head negative and positive um, a lot of the times and to just be doing nothing and not being occupied can affect that and you can be it's like a journey inwards that we're all taking kind of and we're going to learn things about ourselves that we never knew like when we get bored when we get really fed up and or we just come to gunpoint with all our family members and literally kill each other 
like over something stupid because we're stuck in the same house but we just keep to ourselves for a bit you know hold on and we'll get through this um i don't know how light-hearted um i can make the podcast really because it's just real it's just reality and it's not good or bad it's just it is what it is and we're going to get through it and there'll be a vaccine soon enough so if it does come back next year we'll send it back where it came from and yeah they say the simpsons predicted it it did i've seen the episode it's crazy simpsons predict a lot they predicted trump you know and uh if it does come to it we will have to build a huge dome over london like in the simpsons movie but it's definitely a strange time we're living in and technology is helping us more where before we had the choice of using it you know now you've got no choice you want to speak to a family member or a friend you got you got facetime or call them or whatsapp or whatever and you're going to learn who really cares about you in these times you're going to learn who really considers you or respects you or who doesn't in this situation because those those most important to us or dear to us and vice versa will will appear you know and they're all the the ones you'll be talking to in this time despite all the difficult things for that moment you'll forget and you'll be chatting with your friend relating to them as well everyone relates to everyone now we've got this in common so it doesn't discriminate it's not against or for anyone you know it's just ev- anyone and everyone rich poor doesn't matter who you are so that's a common thing we got as people as humans and for the first time in like ever i think we can all agree that we want to get rid of this virus and stop the stop the rot the rot stop it stop the rot that's kind of that's a is that a football term yeah yeah basically want to get rid of this virus however you put it however you slice it we all can agree on that but yeah it is difficult to be at home all the time to keep yourself occupied too keep your mind off it try not to watch the news too much yeah watch the updates to get the latest updates and all that from boris but don't occupy yourself with that all the time you know read a book if you've got a garden go in the garden if you've got a local park go around the park just avoid people doesn't mean you can't go out you know just be careful that is it the risk is high we all know that but if you take the right precautions it's fine I mean, like, I'm hearing now that there's people coming to your doors saying, like, pretending to be people who are testing for corona. Like, come on. Like, you're going to break in my house when I'm here. You're going to pretend to be testing for corona and then break in my house. No, thank you. Like, these idiots. Like, what you can do is just come to the door coughing in it, and then they'll run the other way. Like, sorry, I've got corona, you can't come in. That's what I'm going to do, just, if one of them come to the door, like, nah, you're going to get knocked out, son. I'm gonna, or I'll see him on the camera first, and I'll just be like, yeah, this is this is a fake, this is some fake shit going on here. It's always some sort of scam going on. And people are going to be fighting over hand gel and wet wipes and toilet paper or whatever, whatever stuff they used to clean. Cleaning products, like alcohol, alcohol is... Uh, in short supply alcohol is in what you use to clean stuff what you put in cleaning products so everyone's going to be buying cleaning products now and using alcohol to clean it's like what we've got to do to fight this evil thing Yep, so I've got the book of I Am Legend right here. I'm going to start reading that because that's kind of the situation we're in. If you watch that film, you can kind of see the resemblance of the panic of the world. And like, there's no zombies though, so we're fine. There might be. 
So watching Walking Dead's got me thinking about like end of the world, Judgment Day kind of apocalyptic stuff. And all those films ring true now. Some sort of connection to what we're going through. It's like a movie. We just want to know what the ending is. Hopefully it's a happy ending. But but not necessarily happy, but like, yay, we made it. We're alive. And yeah, hopefully that day sooner than, than rather than later. want to get back to normal, really. want to enjoy the summer because me, like uh, for my channel, summer is like the best. It's when I make the real content, when I make the real bucks. Well, if any at this point, because like I want, I had this plan of getting my merch and selling it. Just as I start getting my merch, this virus hits. And, like, who's going to spend money on some merchandise when they need milk and water and toilet paper, you know? Who's going to be spending any extra money around here? No one. Everyone's saving their money now because they're either not working or whatever or getting paid 80% of their wages. But still, this kind of thing makes everyone not want to spend. You know, no, nobody's going out to restaurants because we can't, you know, pubs clubs and there's people really upset about the pubs including me but I know it's got to be done I haven't been out for a week anyway I mean people were still going out till yesterday because they could I didn't have that luxury because I'm a, an at risk person so I've been having to follow the advice I'm not going to be like oh yeah I'm tough I've been through a lot in my life so I can get through this I can get through this yeah but only if I if I like I'm careful I'm not going to take the risks, you know. Some some people think they can afford to. Uh, young, old, whoever you are, you could get it. And the risk is different for everyone. Like, you don't know. Like, people think, oh, yeah, it doesn't affect young people. But it, it can affect anyone, so... And we don't know that, like, everything about this virus. Um, there's a lot of fake news going around, so just be careful of that, really. And I don't want to watch the news too much, because it just just depresses you really it's the same stuff wash your hands this and that you know and there's people still going to work risking it and you know I mean in some sense you're lucky because you can continue to work and get paid and a lot of people are going to struggle financially in this like day to day it's a day to day thing now every day is different so it's, people are struggling some people not so much but just pray for the ones that are and those who are less fortunate in this time because they're going to need help. They're going to need kindness more than ever and it's going to teach us as people to be kinder um, even though you can't go near anyone in public or anything. You know, in general, we're going to be closer, further away from each other in these 12 weeks or however long, but closer because the technology allowed, allows us to. We've got no other choice. So, but to use it, you know, and lucky it's there. If it wasn't there, and we never this tech, all these ways to con connect to people, to connect the world, where would we be? We'd have nothing. You know, it's good. It's a gift and a curse because all that information will mess up your brain. It's too much. And Instagram is a dangerous place. I'm on it. We're all on it. But and maybe I'm a hypocrite. Call me a hypocrite, whatever. But Instagram is a dodgy place. Yeah, I'm on there, but like it will. It will depress you in half an hour. It will get you because you'll see all these fake people that are so happy. And we've all been, we've all done it. We've all post posted something where it's like exaggerating the truth or the positivity of, of a situation or the gravity of a situation. We've all done it, and we all do it. And it's self actualization, if that's the word, self verification. That's what I was looking for. That's what we're all looking for. A bit of verification from others. And now the only way we can do that is online. And we've got no choice. But is it that... I mean, we're lucky in that sense. The amount of people I've spoken to on FaceTime. Or WhatsApp call, whatever you friggin' call it. Or whatever whatever uh, mode of communication you use. Uh, I've been using it and it's it's good. I mean, after this, I'm going to communicate with a lot more people a lot more. People that I wouldn't normally speak to. Like like some family members that I would normally see. Or friends that I'd normally see. I can't so I've got to FaceTime or, or WhatsApp them or whatever. And in those moments you can escape. 
from all the the misery that the news is sharing and just share some good times and know that when this is done you're going to make more good memories you're going to make the most of everything I want to you're going to be in the pub especially in the pub a lot whoever's missing the pub like me or just missing freedom like to get on the bus and go somewhere like I used to do that all the time and then film a video um but and uh, London is my city I love London at the moment it's going through some stuff but it will be back and I'll be there to show you what's changed and what's new when the time comes and I don't know what this means for my summer holiday please don't ruin my summer holiday corona Um, I'm just saying I need that otherwise it'll be spent here Uh, that'd be weird that'd be weird be a lot more vlogging going on but it'll be different but yeah when it's over I need a holiday and there's people that are like treating it like hol- I mean don't necessarily treat it like a holiday because it's like there's dodgy stuff going on but you know make the most of it don't just get depressed about it all day like keep your mind active keep doing different things try meditation if it works for you don't work for everyone just I end up just um, yeah my brain just goes on a, on a wild ride thinking about something I don't do drugs guys I don't do any psychedelics but my brain is crazy so I can't really meditate like I've tried it in the past um, I, I kind of I start meditating and then end up just thinking about something else easily distracted ADHD well you never know <laughs> I mean, for so for people that have got a lot of energy that they need to get rid of because they'll be running up and down the stairs now doing backflips on the sofa, whatever you can do, or watching a series on Netflix. Netflix and quarantine. That, that's what we're doing now. We've got, we've got a few weeks of this, or months, a few months, but it'll be gone soon enough and then we better appreciate what we got more because... If this doesn't make you appreciate what you got, or life, then what will? I don't know. Certainly making me appreciate freedom that we took for granted. We all took it for granted, and maybe we still do. And yeah, we, we're all having a moan about this, but like I said, it could be worse. While it could be better, it could be a whole lot worse. Uh, and consider those around you, the elderly, those at risk. You know, and I want to get to 100 subscribers. I'm on 99, guys. Come on, let's do that sooner rather than later. Then I'll have a video to celebrate 100 subscribers. And then next on from that is 100 million, and the world is my oyster. So, yeah, guys, whatever you're doing, if you're working still, if you're at home, just appreciate, learn to appreciate what you had before and know that when you get it back what what we've all been through to get it back you know the sacrifices the nurses and doctors are making for us to live our lives like when a fireman takes his job when a policeman takes his job when a soldier gets his job um, they know that the risk of that job is death and getting killed in action and now nurses and doctors are on that same level they deserve a lot more respect for what they do they always have and policemen and firemen as well but it, we need we need all these people right now the NHS we need luckily it ain't been privatised which they were going to do but they ain't going to do that now we need it more than ever and we've got to just pray for those people that they help us get through this and they, they they're right at the end of it themselves because Nurses and doctors are dying in Italy to to save others, and it's going to happen here. Uh, I'm, you know, it's not nice saying that, but that's the reality. But they're going to sacrifice a lot for us if they haven't already, and we're ready for this. And the world wasn't, and well, maybe we're not here either. But I, personally, I'm ready. Like we 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 can take twelve weeks in isolation out of respect for others that are 
suffering from it or suffered from it. Like, screw this, we're going to we're gonna kick this virus in the arse and we're going to get back to our lives, that's it. But it's going to be different after this. It's going to be for the better in some ways. Like I said, we've got time to think, time to reflect on our lives so far. It's like pr- pressing pause and then coming back after a break. That's all it is. And just come back stronger. Like, you're going to learn something from this. For sure. If you don't, like, I I don't know. Nothing will teach you anything then. You'll never learn anything if you can't learn from this. But yeah, I'm going to play a whole load of Call of Duty. A whole load of FIFA and whatever other game I want. Because I've got the time and I'm going to watch so many series. I don't care. Try and meditate. Um, Keep vlogging. I'm going to keep vlogging. Or podcasting or whatever. Whatever kind of video like the reaction videos that I'm doing they're getting pretty fun to do actually and it's good timing because I can perfect my skills and then when this is over like hopefully I have 100 subscribers or more come on guys we can do this we've got this I'm out here if I actually press the button to turn it off that might have worked. <laughs>